Hello and welcome back to part three of our three part mini series on setting up Windows deployment services and deploying Windows 10 across our network. So I'm just going to take off from where I left off in the previous video. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I will make sure to leave a link to that video in the YouTube card as well as in the video description down below. So the first thing I want to do as I begin part three of our three part mini series is to come to the menu of our VMware, click on file and say new virtual machine. So I will keep it to typical and I'll go to next. I will say install the operating system later and I'll go to next. I will keep it to Microsoft Windows and keep it to Windows 10 and go to next. And I'll put the name of this client computer to Windows 10 WDS and go to NES. I will keep the hard drive to 60 gig, keep it to split virtual disk, and then go to NES. These are the summary. I will just say finish, give it a few seconds, and now I have my virtual machine. So this virtual machine is a blank virtual machine. So all I need to do is to boot this virtual machine on the network and it should be able to first of all get an IP address from the DSCP server and then the second thing it would do is to connect to the WDS server and then boot from the WDS server and allow us to install Windows 10. The next thing I want to check to make sure that everything will work well is the network adapter. So I'm looking at the network property is set to NAT. I'll come to my Server, go to VMware, go to settings, look at the network, it's also set to NAT. So everything should work. So I will go back to my Windows 10. I'll click on it. And I will power on my Windows 10. Say yes. So I press F12 to boot from the network. I will release my mouse and just come up and scratch it up a little bit. Yeah, so that you can be able to see. So it's trying to boot from the network. I'll give it a few seconds and allow it to boot from the network. Okay, so it failed. It didn't boot from the network. So I want to release the mouse. I will just turn off this virtual machine. So I will power off. Say power off. I'm just going to look at the settings of the virtual machine. So I'll right click on it, say settings. I will go to options. I'll go to advanced. Okay, so I want to change it from UFI to BIOS. So I'll put it to BIOS. I'll click on OK. And then I'll power on my virtual machine. And then I'll press F12 to boot work. So it even tell me at the bottom, press F12 to boot from the network. So now it's trying to boot from the network. I'll give it a few seconds and allow it to discover the DSCP server, obtain an IP, and then also boot from the WDS server. As you can see, it has gotten an IP address from our DSCP server 10.10.10.37. .10 .10 it got a net mask. This is the DSCP server IP address 10.10.10.2 .10 .10 and the DSCP server is DC02. So it has booted from the network and it's trying to boot now from the WDS server. So we'll give it a few seconds and allow that to connect. So we can see it is booting now from our WDS server which is 10.10.10.2 .10 .10 .10 and it's booting from the boot.win file, as you can see at the bottom. So we'll give it a few seconds and allow everything to load up. So as you can see, our Windows installation is loading up. So again, we'll give it a few seconds and allow it to load up. All right, so as you can see, the Windows Deployment Services installation of Windows 10 
has successfully loaded up. So you can see Windows deployment services. And then it shows you for local for you to choose the language to install Windows 10. So I'm just going to keep it to English, United States. For my keyboard or input method, I'm just going to keep it to US and I will click on next. And then at this screen, I need to enter in the administrator for my domain controller. So I will begin by putting in my domain name, KLA backslash and I'll put the username, which is administrator, and I'll put in my administrator password. But if you pay attention to the top, it says enter username in the format, and this is the format. So you first start with your domain name, and then followed by a backslash, and then the username. Or you could just put the user at your domain, right? Now that I've done that, I will click on OK, Password is not correct. So I'm going to put KLA password administrator. Going to retype my password. Press OK. So once I do that, I'm taken to the next train to select the operating system. If you can remember when we were converting the install.esd file to the install.wimp in episode one of our three part mini series we only extracted the Windows 10 Professional. That's why we have Windows 10 Professional is the only operating system here in the list. Had we extracted all of the various versions of Windows 10, we would have seen all of them here in the list. So yeah, we don't have much of an option. We will just keep it to Windows 10 Pro and then we'll click on Next. Then it will discover our hard drive and then we can just keep it to install Windows 10 on our entire 100 gigabyte of hard drive. So if that's what we want to do, we can click next. For any reason that you would like to partition this hard drive, you can always come to drive options and then you can say new and then we can put in the size of the hard drive. So let's suppose that we want to install our operating system on 60 gig of hard drive space. We will say 1024 multiplied by 60 gigabyte will give us the size of 60 gig in megabyte. And that will be 61440. So we'll click on apply and then it's going to tell us that to ensure that all Windows feature work correctly, Windows might create additional partition for system files. So we are okay with that. We'll click on okay. And Windows is going to create some additional system files partition. As you can see, we didn't create a 50 megabyte for system partition that was automatically created by Windows. So partition two, will be our drive C when the operating system is installed. And then this will be our drive D. But for now, this drive is unallocated. So if we keep it unallocated, we will have to go into the operating system and go to the disk management and format this hard drive before it will become available in our file manager. But if we want it to just be available after the installation, we can click on this and then we can click on new and I will just allocate the entire 40 gig to that partition. So we'll just click on apply and then it's going to allocate the 40 gig to that partition. But we want to install our operating system on the 60 gigabyte. So we'll go back up to partition two and click on partition two and keep it highlighted. And then we click on next so that we can install on partition two. So as you can see, the installation of Windows 10 has begun. And usually with the deployment of Windows operating system using WDS, you will notice that the installation takes a faster time to install compared to if you are installing the operating system from a USB drive or from a DVD 
dry. Right, so once we restart the computer after the installation of Windows 10, we are now prompted to select our region. So I'm just going to select Canada, show to select the country that you live in. So I'm going to choose Canada. So once I choose Canada, I'm going to click on yes. And then for my keyboard layout, I'm using US keyboard layout. So I will just keep it to US and click on yes. And then to add an additional keyboard, I will say skip. Because you can always do that from within Windows. So I will give it a few seconds and allow it to complete this stage. So at this next screen is asking me to select the network. Currently, I don't have internet because there's no connection between my computer and my virtual computer. So I would just click on, I don't have internet in the bottom left-hand corner. Now I'll click on continue with limited setup because I don't have access to internet right now. Just going to accept the Windows 10 license agreement. This stage I'm asked to put in my computer name. So I'll just name it Windows 10 WDS. Click on next score. Now I click store. I'll click on next. So for the location, I will click on no. For find my device. And then I can pick send required diagnostic data. Click on accept. Improve anything, I'm just going to say no. Click on accept. Still up my experience of that those state data, I'm going to say no. Accept. To let apps use advertising ID, no. Accept. And I'm being asked to set up Cortana. I will say not now. All right, so we have successfully completed the deployment and setup of Windows 10 using WDS. So this brings an end to this three part minute series. So thank you so much for sticking in with me following this entire journey and learning how to deploy Windows using Windows deployment services. In our very next video, what we will do is we will use the Windows deployment services to deploy Windows 11. Feel free to check out the next video, but share this video with someone who will find it useful. Like the video if you love it. Leave a comment if you have questions or if you just want to provide some love and feedback for us. Make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel. And currently we have Super Chat. So if you want to show your support for what we do here at Call Academy, make sure to leave a Super Chat and, you know, and support us. Thank you very much and I sincerely do appreciate all of you. Love you. Take care. Bye.